Hey all here at OS Reviews, you're watching our video unboxing and first impressions look at the Le Eco Pro 3 AI. The AI stands for Artificial Intelligence, and that means Le Eco has built in their own smart assistant, similar to Alexa or Cortana uh, or Siri, and they've integrated it into this phone for the first time. The device sells for only $150 unlocked, and you're getting excellent specifications for the price. Le Eco has always delivered a very good value for the money, that includes a 5.5 inch full 1080p display. We have a dual cameras on this device so it has that bokeh effect when capturing images and it also has a fingerprint scanner in addition to having uh, the Helio X23 or the X27 processor depending on the version that you pick up. So potentially it's a DECA core processor clocked at 2.7 gigahertz. It's also complemented with 4 gigs of built-in RAM and USB Type-C. So it's all very future proof for only $150. Part of the reason why the uh cost is so low is because Laeco is more of a content provider company. They're trying to be uh, equivalent to Amazon but uh, in China. So they have a lot of streaming services and paid services uh, and the device is really only a way of accessing some of their services which is why they don't technically make too much money from their phones. Just like the Kindle uh, e-readers, they're trying to get you to subscribe to their other paid services in order to generate revenue. Um, Laeco again were in the news recently in the past few months because they opened a very large branch here in California, uh, but unfortunately things didn't go so well because they tried to scale up too quickly, trying to make uh, autonomous self-driving cars and trying to produce all types of electronics different from just smartphones, and uh, they didn't, I guess, have enough funding or, or revenue really to carry that project forward, which is why they're, they've scaled back quite a bit, but the uh, Pro 3 AI is still one of their latest phones that they've brought out to market. It also supports Dolby Atmos, um, so it has pretty good sound quality supposedly it has 2.5D curved glass on the display and the camera has 13 megapixels for both uh, rear cameras and 8 megapixels from the front facing selfie camera so again very competitive specs for a premium mid-end smartphone so here's the device and let's take a closer look at the phone in a second set it off to the side. In the swap we have the USB Type-C cable for data transfer and charging. It does support Qualcomm's Quick Charge 3.0. Uh, that will give you again a very quick uh, juice up when you're on the run and it has a 4070 milliamp hour capacity battery so the battery size isn't small either. Uh, there's also a Type-C to 3.5 millimeter adapter because unfortunately there is no headphone jack on this phone. It could be a deal breaker to some. Uh, there's also the charger which as you can see here supports Qualcomm Quick Charge 3 out of the box so they give you a fast charger that's branded by Le Eco. And if we open up this internal compartment, it's probably instruction manuals. And I should point out that Le Eco is the same company as uh, Le TV. And here are, we also get some stickers which are uh, kind of an interesting touch. It seems like you can decorate the dual cameras on the back using these stickers. It's actually a very cool idea. It's a way to customize the phone. And uh, some of these look like comic book characters. And there's also the instruction manual that is unfortunately printed in Chinese. Uh, it seems like this is a phone that was also uh, originally intended only for the Chinese market. And uh, the reason why the price is kind of low is because it's been imported uh, from China to uh, outside to Europe and to the US. So here's also a sim ejector tool. And uh, that's pretty much it. Taking a look at the device next, uh, here it is. It's a simple slab. It doesn't have the newer aspect ratio in 2018, which is 2 by 1 or uh, 18 by 9. So it's still a pretty typical uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, not quite as stretched. But uh, as a result, you have a slightly wider viewing experience and a more conservative look. Uh, on the front here, we just have a, sc a screen protector. Let's peel this off. And on the back here, we also have another layer of protector. The phone is made out of aluminum, as is customary for Le Eco. Uh, many of their phones have been sharing the same design language since the first uh, Le Eco phone, the Le Eco 1, that came out 2-3 years ago. Uh, but this is actually a slightly uh, different step as far as the design philosophy is concerned. It has a slightly more streamlined look than we're used to from the company. Instead of having really sharp angular corners, we have rounded corners on this one, and very soft and 
antenna lines that's uh, made out of plastic for reception. Uh, there's the company's branding, there's the fingerprint scanner, and there's the dual camera lens and LED flash. The side here has the volume rocker, the power key, and on the top we also have an IR blaster for controlling your television set. The side here features the SIM card tray, uh, dash micro SD expansion slot, and th this is the microphone, speaker, and USB Type-C slot. Overall, it's a pretty premium feeling phone. It's a unibody finish, everything is made out of metal, and it looks a little sleeker than before because of the rounded corners and they got rid of some of the branding. So as a result, it looks slightly more modern in my opinion. Uh, on the front here you can see it definitely still has bezels, but we do have curved edges. And a difference between this version and some other Le Eco phones that we've seen is that uh, they have just one color, at least on this black version, for both the bezels and the screen. So it seems like it blends in a little better. Before, they always use a gold or plastic white frame uh, for the top and bottom, and then the screen looks like it's sandwiched in between that, uh, which gave it a slightly older look, but now it seems everything is slightly more modern. Um, so again, this is the display. I PS panel. We also have a Le Eco button in the center here. We have a back and a home key. And on the top here is the front facing camera and the earpiece. This is running on EUI, which is Le TV's custom skin on top of Android, uh, I believe 6.0 on this version, uh, possibly upgradable in the future. So it has a pretty heavy customization and uh, that's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. And we do have almost a full charge right out of the box. Uh, it does have what seems like pretty decent viewing angles. I'm going to skip this for now. And the screen does seem to be quite sensitive, which is good. It's a multi-touch IPS panel. And let's try skipping through. It seems to be okay in terms of uh, overall processing speed so far. Of course, we haven't really done too much. And it's telling us to create a Le Eco account, I guess, to access some of their services. And now we're going to add a fingerprint using the scanner on the back. So it seems to be quite responsive and quick. Uh, trying to move my finger around slightly just to secure the edges and uh, get a more accurate scan in the future. Select a font size. So let's just say continue as well. And we can select a view size. So how large we want the icons and the menus to appear. And now it says share the Le Eco world and finish. So definitely a different launch up setup process than we've come to expect from a stock uh, vanilla Android device. So you can see this is what the uh, EM our EUI looks like, and it says swipe left to loop back to the first screen, so it uh, is continuously looping. Uh, that means I can always swipe, it seems, to go back and forth. And uh, on the left here, we have what's called Love View, which is probably going to be some of their videos and services that they're pushing. Uh, so again, equivalent would be Amazon Prime, Amazon Video. Uh, so they would probably push some of their own video services and maybe news and articles, things like that. But everything else, you can see the icons look very different from what we've come to expect from Android. It looks pretty colorful, reminds me quite a lot of maybe uh, Huawei or some other, uh, you know, Meizu, other Chinese companies uh, that have their custom launchers on top of phones and this one does not seem to have a traditional app uh, launcher or uh, app tray either but it does have all the Google services pre-installed including Google Maps, Gmail, Drive, of course you have the Play Store and there's quite a few of their proprietary apps like a weather app, there's their own email app, recorder app, remote control app, things like that are all pre-installed um, and it seems like the drag down notification shade looks like this and again the La TV app right there has been customized. Taking a look at the device, uh, we can see that we're running on EUI version 5.9 out of the box. This is the Helio X23 Deca Core 2.3 GHz version and uh, it's actually built on top of Android 6.0 Marshmallow. So not exactly the newest version of Android, but hopefully uh, Le Eco will bring out some updates that will uh, you know, push the phone over to uh, Nougat or Oreo possibly uh, in the future. So we'll be doing a lot more testing as far as the phone's performance and its software and to find out whether the AI uh, built into this phone actually makes sense or not. And of course, we'll also go through the dual camera setup and the camera performance in our full review coming out soon. So be sure to stay tuned for that. But for now, this has been our unboxing and first impressions look at the Le Eco uh, Le Pro 3 AI Edition, a very interesting 5.5 inch smartphone. And uh, just before we go, here's a quick size comparison with a uh, Xiaomi Mi Note 2, which has a 5.7 inch screen, so slightly larger for Xiaomi, but uh, roughly the same thickness. Overall, definitely a very premium feeling phone on first impressions for not too much money. So perhaps a good budget choice as we start 2018.